This is a report on two recent repairs of Tektronix 7854 digital storage oscilloscopes. The first problem was found by our museum associate Holger Lubin in Germany. His 7854 would blow the mains fuse. He discovered the problem was a faulty surge suppressor, also known as a spark gap. There are two in the main circuit to protect the power supply from line transients. They're rated at 230 volts breakdown, but the failing device was breaking down at a much lower voltage. Holger diagnosed this by bringing up the 7854 on a variac. Remember in Europe the standard mains voltage is 230, whereas in North America the standard is 120. At a voltage below the full 230 mains voltage, the 7854 power supply would start up, but on increasing the variac output, the mains fuse would blow. On a curve tracer, the failing device showed a breakdown much lower than its rating. We don't know why the breakdown voltage of the device was so low. It may have been subjected to a surge in its past. The instrument in the second repair <coughs> showed the ticking power supply problem. Even with no plug-ins installed, the instrument would not start up. No front panel lights were on or would flash occasionally, and the fan was not running. A faint ticking noise about once a second came from the power supply. The high efficiency power supply attempts to start up but shuts off immediately if it detects a problem. The ticking sounds are its periodic attempts to restart. There is an extensive procedure for diagnosing power supply problems in the manual. We followed the procedure and determined the problem to be in the high voltage section. This was determined by disconnecting P40 from the A12 control regulator board as recommended in the manual. Once this was done, the instrument powered up. Front panel lights came on and the fan ran, but as expected, there was no trace since there was no high voltage. There is an easier process which does not require removing the power supply module to access P40. The other end of the cable is on the high voltage board and is accessible without any disassembly. Since high voltage failures do occur, <coughs> before following the power supply diagnosis procedure, try removing this connector. If the instrument then starts up, the problem is in the high voltage section. Unfortunately, there is no procedure in the manual for diagnosing high voltage problems, nor are there instructions on removing the high voltage board. Removing, um, getting the high voltage board requires removing the back cover. Okay, once you have the back loose, there are three cables and a couple of wires uh, that need to be well removed in order to get the best access to the high voltage board. So you need to remove this, these two uh, ribbon cable connectors and this harmonica, which is interesting because it's keyed. And then a third wire, a uh, single wire here. There's also a ground lead, but you can leave that on, uh, the safety ground. Now we can remove the screws that are securing the Z-axis board in this part of the rear panel bracket. You can swing out the Z-axis board, but I need to undo this clamp that's holding these cables. And move the cables out of the way. Now you can you can swing out the Z-axis board, and you can get access to the high voltage board. Uh, to do anything with it, you may need to remove it. So, to do that, you need to swing this board out in order to get to screws inside at the bottom left and the top left of the video of the um, high voltage board. And the screws on the top right and bottom right of the high voltage board. And you can remove the high voltage board. <coughs> you have to pull the uh, CRT anode connector out, but you'll find that even then you can't remove the board 
until you loosen this back uh, casting. So I need to put, take a couple more screws. Okay, the back casting is held on with two screws. Now, now you can move the back casting out of the way <coughs> and now you can pull the high voltage board out. You, I haven't fit, been able to figure out any way to get the high voltage board out without loosening the back casting. And <coughs> also I removed the fan in order to get, there would be a way to get the blade off the fan. but. I haven't seen how. But I removed the fan in order to open this, uh, swing this open wider to get to the screws on the high voltage board. I wish there was some, they say I haven't found a procedure in the manual that says exactly how to do all this. The most likely cause of problems in the high voltage circuit center around T14. It's driven by one of the windings on the main power supply transformer, T110. If too much load is thrown back on T110 from T14, then the power supply goes into tick mode. A likely problem is one of the components around T14, or possibly T14 itself. The spec helpfully shows the primary inductance should be 2 millihenries, but it will only measure this when all the loads on the secondaries are removed. This is done by unsoldering the thin brown wire that goes to a standoff connected to R16, a 2.7K resistor. Unsolder the yellow, green, and blue wires from the PCB, noting the position of each. The remaining load on T14, the CRT filament, is already disconnected. T14's primary, which can be accessed by pins 1 and 4 on P40, should now measure about 2 millihenries. If the measurement is much less than 2 millihenry, then T14 is suspect. Even if it passes the inductance check, it could still have an internal short, so checking all the leads to ground should be done. If T14 appears okay, check the components in the high voltage path, C82, CR82, and CR83, and C84. A failing CR82 or CR83 might show a short on an ohmmeter, but they have forward voltages of at least 20 volts, so a decisive check would require a curve tracer. CR101 and 102 can be checked with an ohmmeter. Also check C103 and C104. The high voltage multiplier may be faulty. It can't be checked with an ohmmeter or a curve tracer. This is the setup I use for testing multipliers. They can be driven by a moderate voltage high frequency source such as the module shown here. Its output is about 300 volts peak, so the multiplier output should be about 2000 volts. I use a high voltage probe made from a focus divider from an old CRT monitor. It's an insulated 300 mega ohm resistor. With an output load of 300K, it gives a 1000 to 1 voltage ratio. The multiplier of the subject instrument passed this test. In, on the subject instrument, charring was seen on the PCB under C103 once it was removed. It's not clear what caused this, possibly leakage from C103. The charring caused the resistance between T14 wires 4 and 5 to be about 60 ohms. This load on the T14 secondary reflected back an excessive load to the primary, causing the power supply to go into tick mode. I replaced C103 and 104 and lifted the anode ends of CR101, 102, and, and 19, bypassing the charred circuit board pads. Once I reinstalled the high voltage supply, the instrument powered up and worked properly.